today we're going to take a look at section 8.1, which is right triangles and applications of right triangles. All right, so first of all, to solve a triangle means to find all of its missing angles um, as well as its missing sides. All right, so if we take a look at triangle ABC, we are told that um, angle A is 90 degrees. We know that side B, so side B is always straight across from angle B, so this is side B, that's 21. And then we know side A, which is straight across, or in this case, the hypotenuse, um, right across from angle A is 29. Okay, so we need to find um, the missing angles as well as the missing sides. Okay, so first of all, some of you are probably thinking, I know two of the sides, I can find side C pretty easily. In order to, in order to do that, we've got to do um, Pythagorean theorem. So we've got A squared, um, I'm gonna go ahead and switch that though. You take the two legs squared, so opposite here is little c. So in this case, it's going to be c squared plus, uh, oops, b squared equals a squared because a was our hypotenuse. Normally we do a squared um, plus b squared equals c squared, but again, just because of the way these angles were um, labeled, that's not going to be the case. So it's always the legs squared um, added together equals the hypotenuse. So in this case, we get c squared plus 21 squared equals 29 squared. Okay, so if we go ahead and move that 21 squared over to the other side, that gives us c squared equals 400. If we plug that into our calculator and do 29 squared minus 21 squared, we root both sides. Technically, we get plus or minus 20. Um, but again, in this case, because it um, represents the length of a side, the negative sign doesn't really make sense. Um, so in this case, c is just going to be 20. If this was an application problem, it'd be 20 inches, 20 feet, etc. cetera. Um, it would be some unit of distance. All right, so now we've got to find the other two angles. We know the angles in a triangle add up to 180. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and opt to find angle B first, and it doesn't matter um, which angle you could have found C first as well. I know that this side is the opposite side, and this side is the hypotenuse. So since we have a right triangle, we can use Sokotoa. So I know that sine of angle B is equal to the opposite side, which is 21 over the hypotenuse, which is 29. Um, we do have to be really careful here. We need to be in degree mode because we want the degree measure of um, the angle. We don't want radians. So I'm gonna go second sine in my calculator, 21 over 29. Um, and when I do that, I get 46. 0.397. So angle B is 46.397. And there's some more after that. So if we round to the nearest hundredth, we get angle B is equal to 46.40 degrees. So we'll call that 46.40 degrees. And if we go ahead and label that inside our triangle, this guy right here is 4640. We know that angles A, B, and C have to add up to 180. So if I just take my calculator and I do 180 minus 90 minus 4640, I know that that other angle is 43.60 degrees or just 43.6 either way. Um, so that's a pretty straightforward application problem or um, not application problem, right triangle problem where you have to find all the missing sides and all the missing angles. All right, so we're gonna do an application that is very similar to this. Um, it says a rhombus has a perimeter of 40 centimeters, so all the way around the outside it's 40 centimeters, and an interior angle of 70 degrees. Find the length of the two diagonals to the nearest tenth of a centimeter. All right, so we're looking for the length of the two diagonals. Okay, so some things you may not remember from geometry about a rhombus is their diagonals are perpendicular, their diagonals also bisect each other, um, and then the diagonals also bisect the angle. All right, so if we draw in the diagonals, we've got one going that way, we've got another one going this way. It tells us that it is perpendicular on, uh, or where they intersect, right? So when they intersect, they are perpendicular to each other. Um, we also know that the perimeter is 40, and in a rhombus, all sides are the same. So that means each side has to be 10, and that was 10 centimeters. Okay, and then we also know that one of the angles, um, one of the interior angles is 70 degrees. Okay, so again, it doesn't matter necessarily which angle we pick. I'm gonna go ahead and pick this one up here. If that's 70 degrees, 
we know that since it says it bisects the angles, each one of these has to be 35. Okay, so if I take a look, and I'm gonna try to shade it in light green, if I take a look at this triangle up here in the corner, I'm gonna just go ahead and redraw it here. I know that this angle up here is 35 degrees. I know the hypotenuse is 10 centimeters. And what we're really looking for is we're looking for this side, I'm gonna just go ahead and call this A, and this side down here, I'm gonna go ahead and call it B. All right, so we know an angle. Let's find A first. Uh, so let's label the triangle. This right here is the opposite side, according to that 35 degree angle. This one over here, the 10 is the hypotenuse. So that means A is the adjacent side. So if we find A first, we're looking for A and we know the hypotenuse. So we know the adjacent and the hype, or we want the adjacent, we know the hypotenuse. So that's gonna give me cosine. So cosine of 35 degrees is equal to the adjacent, which is A, over the hypotenuse, which is 10. If I multiply both sides by 10, go ahead and plug that into my calculator. And again, make sure we're in degree mode. So we just do 10 times cosine of 35, and that gives me 8.19. Let's just round it. Oh, it does say round to the nearest tenth. Um, so that would round to 8.2. So we know this piece right here is 8.2 centimeters. Now, if we're looking for the other piece, so let's look for B, that means we're looking for the opposite side and we know the hypotenuse. So opposite and hypotenuse tells us to use sine. So sine of the angle, which is 35 degrees is equal to the opposite side, which is B over the hypotenuse, which is 10. Again, just like on the last one, we multiply both sides by 10. So if I plug 10 times sine of 35, so 10 times the sine of 35 degrees, that gives me 5.7, um, and it's 5.73, so that's gonna be 5.7 centimeters. All right, so again, we're looking for, in the problem, the length of the two diagonals, okay? So one of the things it does say is the diagonals bisect each other. Um, so if we look at this guy right here, this one is 8.2, this one was 8.2. So if I double 8.2, one of the diagonals is approximately, because we did round, 16.4 um, centimeters. Okay, and then if we go the other direction, we know this guy was 5.7. Um, so both of those are 5.7. So diagonal two would be 5.7 times two, or 5.7 and 5.7 which would be 11.4 centimeters approximately. Um, so we were able to find those two diagonals. Um, and again, if we had a problem like this on a quiz or a test, I would remind you of those things about um, a rhombus. I wouldn't expect you necessarily to remember that. If it's a square, I'd expect you to know all four sides are the same. If it's a rectangle, you know that the opposite sides are congruent is something, just the basics I would expect you to remember. All right, so the next thing we're gonna talk about now that we've talked about how to solve a right triangle is we're gonna talk about angle of elevation and angle of depression. Okay, so you actually learned this way back in um, geometry. So the angle of elevation, if I'm standing on the ground and I look at this plane up in the air. So the angle of elevation is the angle from where I'm looking up to the plane, right? Elevate, I think of as to go up. Um, so that's gonna be that angle right there. Okay, now in the other example, angle of depression, so we're standing up here on top of the building, um, depression down, right? Those, um, when, you, when you're depressed, you're down. Um, so that's the way I always remember that one. So the angle of depression is never inside the triangle. It's the angle from where your eyes are down to what we're looking at down on the ground. Okay, one of the things, if you remember about parallel lines, I have this line here, which is parallel to that line. So we have two alternate interior angles. So alternate is on opposite sides of the transversal, which would be that diagonal line. So we know that this angle right here, the angle of depression and the angle on the ground, which really is the angle of elevation, um, because if I was standing down here on the ground and I was looking at the top of the building, that would be my angle of elevation. Okay, so one of the important things that we need to walk away with from this example or this um, idea is that the angle of elevation and the angle of depression are always going to be equal, each, uh, equal to each other. The angle of depression is never going to be inside the triangle. It's always that other piece, but we can go ahead and put it down on the floor 
um, as our angle of elevation. Okay, and again, the reason we know that those two are equal is because they are alternate interior angles. So let's take a look at an example. It says a 75 uh, foot flagpole casts a shadow um, that's 43 feet long. So again, we've got to be smart here. We've got a flagpole. Um, I am not an art person, so there's my flag. Um, the shadow that it casts, so that means the sun, we'll make that yellow, our sun is over here. Um, one thing that people always ask me is, you know, how do I know where to put the shadow? Well, think about it. The shadow's always on the ground, okay? So we know that the flagpole is 75 feet. It has a 43 foot shadow. So I'm gonna make that a little bit smaller. Um, and it says, we wanna find the angle of elevation up to the tip of the sun. Okay, so we know that we, or we can assume that when a flagpole is put into the ground, it's put in um, perpendicular to the ground. Um, and we're looking for the angle of elevation from the tip of the shadow. So if we're standing here at the tip of the shadow, we're looking for that angle of elevation up to the sun. All right, so I'm gonna just call that angle A. So if we find our, um, the sides that we know straight across from angle A, this is the opposite side. Um, this would be my hypotenuse. Therefore, the 43 is my adjacent side. Okay, so again, we know opposite and we know adjacent. So if we think back to Sokotoa, way back from the beginning when we did trig, um, opposite and adjacent tells us that we need to use tangent. So we've got the tangent of angle A is equal to the opposite side, which in this case is 75, over the adjacent side, which is 43. Okay, and again, anytime we're looking for the angle, when we go to our calculator, that's when we have to press the second button. So it's gonna be second tangent, 75 divided by 43. That gives me 60.17 degrees. So the angle of elevation is 60.17 degrees. Okay, so if I was looking up to the sun, I have to look up at 60.17 degrees. If I take a look at the next example, it says a man climbs up, or climbs 213 meters up the side of a pyramid. So we know, we'll just assume that he's climbing on this side. So this is 213 meters. Okay, he finds out that the angle of depression to his starting point, so down here on the floor is his starting point. So when he gets to the top of the mountain, he finds that the angle of depression to his starting point is 52.6 degrees. All right, so again, if he's standing up here at the top, his angle of depression is outside of that triangle. It's from where his eyes are looking down um, to that starting point on the ground. So we know on the outside of this triangle, that angle right here is 52.6 degrees. Okay, so we're trying to figure out how high off the ground is he. So when we measure height, we measure that vertically. So we know there's going to be a right angle there. Okay. We need an angle inside the triangle. Well, we actually know that because remember we said that the angle of depression and the angle of elevation have to be the same. So we know that that angle inside the triangle on the ground is also 52.6 degrees. So again, angle of depression and angle of elevation are the same. Just like if he was look, standing down here looking to the tip of the mountain, he would have to look up 52.6 degrees. We do want to round our answer to the nearest hundredth. Um, so we do have to make sure we read the problem carefully and uh, label our answer. Since we're looking at how high off the ground is he and it was measured in meters, we know that our answer is going to be in meters. All right, so we're trying to find this side right here. I'm going to go ahead and just call that X. Um, if I look at that 52 degrees, this is my opposite side. And then across from the 90 is my hypotenuse. So I'm looking for the opposite and I know my hypotenuse. So again, so Katoa, I know opposite and hypotenuse, so that means I'm going to use sine. The angle we're looking at is 52.6 degrees. That's equal to the opposite, which is x over the adjacent or over the hypotenuse, which is 213. To solve for x, we've got to multiply both sides by 213. So in our calculator, we've got to do 213 times sine of 52.6. That gives me 169.21 because it said round to the nearest hundredth. So it's 169.21. And again, that is in meters. Okay, so the, he's 169.21 meters off the ground. Okay, so we can use right triangles, Sokotoa, um, to find lots of different things. Again, angle of elevation and angle of depression was the big thing that we were looking at there. 
All right, so the last thing we're gonna look at what is called bearing. So bearing is used in navigation and surveying. It's the direction from a point, um, from point O to point P, which I'll draw in a second, um, is equal to the acute angle formed between ray OP and the vertical line through O, also sometimes called the north-south line. Okay, so if I have point O right here and I've got point P somewhere over here, I'm looking at the ray, um, let's try and draw that a little bit straighter. We're looking at the ray through point OP, okay, and what we call the north-south line. So we're always gonna draw that north-south vertical line, okay, and bearing is that angle that's formed right there, okay? So that angle would be the bearing. So it's formed between the north-south line and then the actual point that we're looking for. All right, so let's take, some, or take a look at some examples. Um, a lot of times bearing is given um, with directions attached to it okay so the first first one says we are going to rotate south 35 degrees to the east okay so first of all remember this is north uh, this is east this is south and this is west if you look at a compass that's the way that it goes okay so again we've got to draw that oops draw that north south line okay and we're going to rotate from the south which is down here, we're gonna rotate 35 degrees to the east. So that means we're gonna go 35 degrees to the right in this case, and that would be how I would find my bearing or that angle. All right, if we take a look at the next one, the next one says north 80 degrees west. So again, if I draw that north-south line from the north, so we're starting to the north, we're gonna rotate 80 degrees to the west, and that's gonna be over here on the left side. All right, so if we look at the last one, it says north 45 degrees east. So again, we're looking at the angle formed by the north direction, and then we're gonna rotate 45 degrees to the east, so it would be that angle right there. So again, you're always gonna start with either north or south, and then you're gonna rotate to the east or to the west, um, and that is how you would find the bearing. All right, so let's take a look at the next example. It says, a ship leaves a port at noon and has a bearing of south 27 degrees west. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and call this the port right here, somewhere on that north-south line. Um, and again, it's rotating south 27 degrees west. So from the south, that boat is now going in a direction that's 27 degrees to the west. Okay, it says, if its speed is 20 knots, how many nautical miles south and how many nautical miles, um, oops, that should say uh, nautical miles, that should have said west right in there, will the ship have traveled by six o'clock? Um, so we wanna figure out how many miles did it go to the south? So we're looking for this piece right here and we're also looking for how many miles did it go to the west? So I'm gonna go ahead and call this guy Y and this guy X. We know that the north-south line is a 90 degree angle. What we do know though is that it went 20 knots um, from noon when it left to 6 p.m. So from noon to six is six hours. It was going 120 knots. So we're gonna go ahead and multiply those. So that would be 120 and nautical miles is what the unit is because it talks about how many nautical miles did it go. All right, so again, we're looking for basically X and Y. How many did it go south and how many miles did it go west? So let's take, let's just find Y first. So let's label those angles. So this is the opposite side. Um, the 120 is our hypotenuse because that's across from the 90. So the Y is our adjacent side. So if we're finding Y first, I know the hypotenuse and I'm looking for the adjacent. Okay, so again, in Sokotoa, we're, we know the hypotenuse, we're looking for the adjacent, so we're gonna find, or you use cosine. So it's cosine of 27 degrees equals the adjacent side, which is Y, over the hypotenuse, which is 120. Okay, to solve for Y, we're just gonna multiply both sides by 120. So I'm just gonna go to my calculator and type in 120 times cosine of 27. And that gives me 106.92 miles. 
Okay, so y is 106.92, and then again, this would be nautical miles. So that's how far it went south, all right? So that was south. And then if we wanna find west, that's this guy right here, left to right, so that's x. So again, that's the opposite side. We know the hypotenuse, so opposite and hypotenuse tells us to use sine. So it's sine of 27 degrees is equal to the opposite, which is x over the hypotenuse, which is 120. Again, we're gonna solve that the same way, multiply both sides by 120. So I do 120 times sine of 27, and that gives me 54.48 um, if I round. And again, that's nautical miles, and that would be how far it went west. Okay, so I've answered both of those questions there. All right, that's it for today.